what they are doing now in the morning is pretty much the setup, the setup of the whole vehicle. How are you? How are you sweating? Yeah, we, we can cross, but don't take a picture of the engine. <laughs> Hello, Billy. Hello. To Alba Cologne, there oh, is okay. nothing more important than family. No, sweetie, but you know better than that, no? How are you? I love you. Good. Her Hispanic heritage has a lot to do with that, she says. There's Johnny, our engine guy. Are you behaving today, Johnny? Oh, yeah, always. Oh, yeah, sure, always, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alba's family just happens to include Chevrolet's NASCAR racing team. You guys are doing good, so keep it up. Engineers, mechanics, crew chiefs, pit crews. I heard that there were some cars that crashed. 26 across the wall. And, of course, drivers. No, they might have crashed the day before, but not with, not with you there. If people ask me which one is my favorite driver, I say I, ha I, say I have 22 of them. Okay, that's my response. Cologne, born in Spain and raised in Puerto Rico, has accomplished what no other woman has, ascending to the top at Chevy Racing. How are you there? You doing good? Of course they chose Spain. Yeah. As the program manager since 2001 for what's called the Sprint Cup Series, it, is it? No. Cologne is Chevy's top representative every weekend at the track. What do you want? I have a question for you. In the garages on race weekends, she's like a politician working a crowd. He's going to pay for that. At just a shade over five feet tall, Cologne is a giant in a man's world, moving with confidence and authority. Can you explain in one second what do you do? What do I do? Yeah, what do you do in a normal weekend? You know, what do you do during the week and so on? I just try to keep you happy. Crew chief Tony Gibson has known Alba for 20 years. And uh, I know she was nervous when she first came in. Will I be respected? Will they listen to me? But when she walked in, her feet were grounded pretty good right off the bat. And you knew pretty quick that she knew what she was talking about. And Driver Ryan Newman sees Alba as one, unique. Because, um, you know, she's, she's very personable. Very intelligent, understands the engineering perspective of it, but understands what makes a race car go fast. And with all due respect, you don't ordinarily find that in a woman. Of course, it wasn't easy gaining that respect. When a young woman engineer, fresh out of the University of Puerto Rico, came to General Motors in 1994, it was clear very quickly that winning over the boys wouldn't be easy. How difficult was it for you when you first started? There was not too many engineers in the field. So you are, you know, they, they were not too receptive to engineers yet. And uh, you just come this, you know, little Puerto Rican girl, okay? And she's going to tell me about maybe, you know, what sensors to use, that kind of thing, so. Legendary driver Dale Earnhardt let her know pretty quickly how he felt. When you first started, Dale Earnhardt Sr. came up to you and said, I'll give you a year. And that's it. That, is that true? You know, after many years, I realized that he likes to poke at people, but I didn't realize that at that time. What I knew about Dale was the Dale that you saw on TV. You know, that's, that's what you knew about Dale. Uh, it, it made me mad. Earnhardt's browbeating you know, was, Alba says, both intimidating and motivating, which is what she says he intended all along. You can imagine. Today, the role of motivator, especially to young women, falls to Alba. Do you find yourself or feel yourself now to be a mentor? But sooner or later I realized you, you know, you are an agent of change. You know, you, you have been put in a position, you know, uh, for X or Y reason. And if I, if I have been that blessed for this, you know, it's, it's my deal to give back. You know, I have to help the next generation, you know. There is still a long way to go. You can count on one hand the number of women turning wrenches in the garages on race weekends. And drivers? Well, there's Danica Patrick. Uh, I raced go-karts when I was a kid, so I started racing go-karts when I was 10. <laughs> Patrick, certainly the most recognizable yeah. woman in racing, and Cologne. And this is protecting the driver. Remember, the driver is here. Went to the Boys and Girls Club in Adrian, Michigan, a few days before a big race at the Michigan International Speedway. What is the biggest thing that you have in the front of the car? For both women, an opportunity to inspire kids to pursue careers in science, technology, engineering, and math. And what it's going to do is that we'll pass this and it will go all the way to this part. And what it's going to do is that the cars are going to go faster together. The kids got to make and color model race cars. 
Not surprisingly, the car number that showed up most, 10. You want to take yours there? That would be Patrick's car. And you certainly couldn't have Danica Patrick at your boys and girls club without a race. Okay, one, two, three. Danica. She won! <laughs> yep, Danica won. But for Alba, it's the kids who really win. It's all about motivating and inspiring them, no matter the careers they choose. As a young girl, Alba's dream was not race cars, but spaceships. Growing up, I, I wanted to be an astronaut, you know, and when Sally Wright became, you know, the first yeah. U.S. female astronaut, you know, that, that was a big deal. That was a big deal for, you know, for young girls, you know, and, sure. and for the whole space program, let's be honest about that. Of course, the common denominator in both racing and space is speed. Alba decided on mechanical engineering and at the University of Puerto Rico in Mayaguez helped build race cars for automotive design competitions. It wasn't long before General Motors came calling. I remember I, remember I promised my mom two things when I left that day at the airport. And I said, Mom, I promise you I come back in one year. I lied because I haven't been back, you know, to stay there. And I would never marry an American guy. You lied again, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I lied again. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I lied again. The first floor of General Motors headquarters in Detroit is filled with the latest model year vehicles. The blue Corvette draws you in. I call this sexiness in wheels. Sex on wheels? Sexiness in wheels. Sex, oh, okay. I call it sexiness in okay. wheels, you know? Sex, let's get that right. Yeah. Sexiness in wheels. Sexiness, okay. you know. Cologne says many technological changes in the cars we drive came from innovations at the racetrack. Lightweight materials, sensors, safety devices. The induction system that cools the engine and is installed on the Corvette Stingray production model came from racing. And some of the technology that they learned from there, they applied. Mm -hmm. um, to the production, to the production vehicles, vehicle. Right? One example we have with the induction system, you know, uh, it takes, you know, where it takes the air to be able to cool the engine, so it goes in that so way. So it flows in from in here. Yes. The NASCAR season runs from February to November, 38 races from Florida to California and back. Cologne is at every one. Racing is in her blood. The track is her home. <laughs> they really did. The style changed a lot. Mm -hmm. in, in, mm -hmm. But there is one place she stops by now and again where the past comes to life, where the roots of racing took hold. When you first walk into this place, it's just wow. This is heaven. <laughs> a car lover's heaven paradise. is right. It's paradise. <laughs> the Heritage Center is the history of General Motors told by its cars. If they marked a milestone in innovation or design, they are here. 165 of them, concept cars, experimentals, production models. More than one looks like a spaceship. Another is complete with red fuzzy dice hanging from the mirror. There's a row of Corvettes dating back to 1953. I really like this one, but you know, it's just more the lines, you know? The lines and the split window. Yep. The only time they ever made the split window. To my understanding, that's the only official way you have. Cars are in Alba Cologne's blood, winning races, her passion. Well, let me ask you, does the winning ever get old in your business? Does it ever get old to win? I don't think so. <laughs> never. <laughs> no, never. And if it ever does, Cologne says she'd still like to fly in space. But now there was a story that I read about how breaking in as a woman. 